Thank you, Jeff. Um, I'm glad you said all those wonderful things. I hope my wife heard those. She's in the audience. And um, I am the world's most perfect human being um, who's never done anything wrong. So um, <laughs> let's just get that out of the way. Um, but being a pro snowboarder uh, and someone, um, you know, I thought a lot about this, this TED talk and um, I was, you know, what are themes in my life and da 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 da. And, um, you know, I love doing things I've never done before. Um, I like, um, you know, in doing that, some rules get broken along the way, some ideas get broken. So I just want to get both of those things out of the way right now. Um, I am going to, hopefully no one pulls me off the stage, but I'm going to pull a piece of paper out. I know this is against all TED rules to read from it. Um, but, you know, being a snowboarder, I like to break rules. Um, <laughs> so I'm coming off of a, a sobering week, I would call it. Um, I just, tonight I was a little delayed because I was coming from uh, my second memorial this week of, um, I've lost two friends this week um, to cancer, which, um, you know, was a very sad thing. And uh, when I heard that one of them went, basically went terminal uh, at the age of 39, um, I went on a mountain bike ride, which I like to do is, um, you know, I'm a devout member of the Church of the Seven-Day Recreationalist. <laughs> and um, so went and cleared my thoughts um, and got to the top of peak. I always have a notebook with me, and I wrote this poem, and I think it's um, pertinent for today. And I just I want to celebrate today because life is not infinite, and I recognize that all the time. And... I wrote this Dr. Seuss-inspired poem. Today is the day, whether it's Wednesday or Saturday, sunny or gray, today is the day. Whether it's powder or ice, onshore or offshore, two feet or 10, today is the day. Whether it's November or May, indoor or outdoor, work or play, today is the day. Whether you're happy or sad, hurting or healing, with your friends or your foes, it's your first day or your last day. Today is your day. Yesterday is yesterday. Tomorrow is maybe. Today is the day. Like it or not, it's just that way. So I think a pro snowboarder reading poetry on the TED stage, um, I'm pretty sure that's a world first. So. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I got that out of the way. Um, so um, I also, in the vein of that deal, I just want to um, pause and recognize that um, we are sitting next to the biggest alpine lake in North America. I could live anywhere in the world um, and I choose to live here. So whether, is any, was anyone born here? Sorry, I can't really see. Raise your hands. Okay, so um, I know that you thank your parents every day. Um, my kids do. I wake up um, to, to two kids by my bedside that say thank you every day. <laughs> um, and... We, yes, and to everyone else who found this place, um, we, you know, well done, well played. <laughs> I've been around the world. Um, we, there's a lot of beautiful places in the world, and, um, and there's many paradises, and this is one of them. Um, and, you know, it's just... I think it's important to recognize that. We, we are very fortunate, and I constantly um, am so grateful for where I live, the opportunities that I have, um, 
And, you know, this photo here, um, we can actually, I think we could probably see where we are right now. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's, you know, grabbing life by the horns, um, doing things that have never been done, um, embracing the unknown, um, and that is all these great, beautiful wor words, but it actually, it hurts a little. Um, it, it takes guts. It takes, um, I know with me, I know when I'm getting into the really exciting phase of my life is when I'm waking up at three in the morning and just like really, you know, sleep becomes tough. Um, and, you know, this particular day, this is, um, you know, one of the primo days of the year. I woke up at four in the morning, uh, climbed this deal in the dark. Um, it's at these times I find that when I am uh, in the dark climbing, it's when I really do think of the, um, my friends that I've lost. I've lost a lot of friends. Um, and it's, that to me is just, there's nothing more beautiful than watching a moon set, hiking up a mountain, the sunrise, and in reality, I could have been back home at nine in the morning after this. Um, so it's just an example of like, this is taking life and getting the most out of it. And it definitely hurt when the alarm went off at four in the morning. Um, and, you know, my path to Tahoe um, was pretty obvious. I grew up on Cape Cod, the highest point, uh, 200 feet above sea level. <laughs> so naturally, I am a professional snowboarder. <laughs> um, I'm incredibly grateful for my grandfather who found Vermont. Um, and finding Vermont from Cape Cod was the equivalent of finding the North Pole. Um, my parents fell in love with the mountains. They brought my brothers and I to the mountains, and pretty quickly, we were like, we need to do this every day. Um, and I fell in love with snowboarding. At that time, there was no such thing as being a pro snowboarder. And, but we started meeting people on the lift, and there were bartenders and house painters and stuff, and we're like, hey, Dad, dude, you don't need to work your ass off that hard. Like, you just got to paint houses, and you can <laughs> ride every day. <laughs> and um, so that became uh, my brothers and I's life goals, and we went west as fast as possible. Um, and my parents have, didn't know what the hell went wrong. <laughs> um, they'd be at that cocktail party and going, you know, so what are your kids doing? Well, you know... Todd, you know, he's really succeeded. He's no longer sleeping on the couch. He's got a bedroom now. Um, but eventually my brothers went on to start Teton Gravity Research and I started, um, it took a long time, but started um, moving. Um, I actually met my wife um, and I was living in a closet. And, you know, I just things started getting serious so we moved into a bigger closet together. Um, so, yeah, it took a while for the path to make sense, um, but there was this commitment uh, to it, and I have the honor of being the second oldest pro snowboarder in the world. <laughs> I am 44 years old, which is about 230 years old in pro snowboard years. It's kind of like dog years. <laughs> The first biggest, or the, the, the oldest pro snowboarder in the world is Tom Burt, who lives across the lake. Um, so keep drinking that lake water, because it's really uh, got superpowers. So um, why am I still a pro snowboarder? Um, I think it's because I continue to break new ground. I keep um, evolving. I keep... Um, Finding it naturally just, I, I just love doing things I've never done before. Um, this particular photo, I'm um, three days into the John Muir Wilderness, um, and it was a seven day trip, um, and I, you know, I'd never been able to go that far, that self supported. 
I'm hungry, I'm cold, I'm tired, I'm breaking new ground, I'm looking at mountains I've never seen before, and it is this, um, this, this mindset and the ethos that when I started as a kid, uh, back when I was 10 years old, get better, do new things, and I love when I find myself in the mountains going, Man, I need every bit of information and, and all everything I've learned in the past to be here at this moment, and I could have never been here a day earlier. And that, so that's what this photo means to me. Um, but ironically, breaking new ground in business keeps me up more at, at night than when I'm going to walk up a mountain no one's ever walked up and snowboard back down, and that may kill me, but to go and do these societal things, um, these changes, um, when I went from embracing helicopters to foot-powered snowboarding, I lost a lot of sleep at night, and it wasn't because um, none of it was, man, that's more dangerous, you might die. It was more like, man, what are people going to think? And um, am I going to lose all my sponsors? And I just had to let go. And I thought that it, it was like snowboarding's been good to me. I've had a long career, and I'm going and doing it my way. And if I lose sponsors, fine. Um, thankfully, um, you know, that wasn't the case. It ended up, you know, my career really excelled. Um, I started Protect Our Winners, same deal, who am I? Um, kid barely graduated high school to, to take on climate change. Um, very naive, which is important when you're breaking new ground. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned to ask people um, to, to help, and I embraced, um, and I just really surrounded myself with the smartest people I knew, and I've done that in the mountains and out of the mountains. Um, and that led, you know, to starting uh, Protect Our Winners, um, and then the snowboard company, and onward. And as I got into starting Protect Our Winners, I started to realize, like, wow, this is a kind of a, I took on a lot here. This climate change stuff is not that simple. Um, and science shows that we are, um, you know, we are on a dead end path of destruction. Uh, the words I have never heard from a scientist in my 12 plus years of reading everything you can read on climate change is the problem is not as bad as we think. Um, it's truly a monster issue. Um, and what I also didn't realize is I was picking a fight with the biggest industry in the world, which is the fossil fuel industry. Um, they've done everything they can to discredit science. Um, you know, this graph here, it comes from science. Um, you'll hear a lot about the intergovernmental panel on climate change. It's a report um, that came out in 2019. It comes out every couple of years. This report, this is what real science looks like. It, this report is made up of 1,200 scientists, uh, over 40 countries, um, 42,000 peer-reviewed comments. This is what science is. It's not some rogue, fossil fuel-filled scientist pushing this agenda. Uh, and in that report, it basically says we need to get moving. Uh, we are on a path, best case scenario, 1.5 degrees Celsius warming. And it's um, devastating because we are losing, quite frankly, we're losing this battle. We have, if, you know, we burn more fossil fuels this year than we ever have before. Um, and, but there is hope. Um, we have a new generation coming up that is crushing it. Um, they, they have different beliefs than, say, the baby boomer generation. They do not like that IPCC report. They are um, active, um, but we recognize that Protect Our Winners, at the end of the day, um, the biggest political party in the US is the non-voting party. 
It is bigger than the, the Republican and Democratic Party combined. And largely between that 18 and 35 year old age, how do we get them, them to vote? It's a marketing issue. So this is an example. We meet them where they are, social media, with the heroes, with the marketing they're used to, and this is the style of marketing that we will bring to them. Um, and the other really positive thing is the solutions are jobs creators, and we have the solutions. So we just need to convince our elected, uh, we need the voters to show our elected officials that there is no room in Congress or at the state level or at the federal level for climate deniers and we need to outvote them. And that's why at Protect Our Winners, we've gotten really into voting. We need to win in these really, um, what we call purple states. These, we, we don't spend time in the dark red, we don't spend time in the dark blue. We wanna go into these places uh, where this last presidential election was won by less than 1% of the vote. We go in there and we find, um, you know, we, we find the climbing gyms, the ski resorts, the companies, the heroes in that area, because we were in what we call in my line of work a no-fall zone. Um, this is me on the toughest descent of my life and um, working my way through some no-fall zones. I self-arrested twice on this descent. I generally don't like to do that, um, but that's what we practice for. Uh, but it's really important, and it's time to get out of our comfort zone. It's time to have those tough conversations. It's time to send a message to Congress. We have the solutions. It's smart business. It's jobs creators. And for the first time in history, we need elected officials that are funded by the fossil fuel industry, that are, that are, that are climate deniers, to lose their job, because they do not like losing their job. <laughs> and they will change quick. Um, you won't believe, nobody's ever lost their job because of their stance on climate change. And in 2020, we have that opportunity, not just at the federal level, not just with the president, but with our congressmen here. So we need you to vote, and we need your friends to do the same thing. So please help me protect our winners. Thank you.